normally when people start learning how to parry during an opponent's move in third strike, the first one they learn is Chun's SA2. At the very end, she does a pause and then hits the last hit. A lot of you are familiar with this for obvious reasons, but this is a great way to kind of dip your toes into the more intricate parry system in third strike rather than just hitting forward and down all the time and hoping you get lucky with a parry or are just guessing on wake up or their wake up every time. Using the parry system like this will get you out of a lot of sticky situations that you routinely find yourself into. A lot of bread and butter combinations that lead up to big damage you can just kind of uh, take off the table for your opponent and flip it around so you have the advantage. It turns plus into minus so you can punish, it fucks with their head, and it says, hey man, don't be fucking trying to pull this shit, because fuck you. All the Shotos in the cast have a bread and butter that's commonly referred to as tic-tac-toe. What it is is just crouching short, jab short. It's usually followed up with a super or a dash throw or an overhead. The mix-up potential with this is pretty great, so being able to shut this down is huge. When it comes to pairing B and Bs or in-between moves, Ken's target combo is a good thing to parry like this for practice. It shows you the timing and it'll really get you accustomed to doing red parries. Now in an actual match, I think it's probably just better to block um, because if he sees you parry, he has enough time to see that you block the second hit and then he's not gonna go for the DP. And then even if he does DP, you can just block that too and you don't have to put yourself in that much risk to still get the same punish. Um, play around with it, see if you can throw and see what kind of shit your character can do. Um, if you can pop off a super, that would probably be great. I think it's probably just better to block um, because if he sees you parry, he has enough time to see that you block the second hit and then he's not going to go for the DP. When it comes to Ken's axe kick, I honestly think it's just easier to react to it and hit a button or just fucking parry both of them. Or if you're good, you can car throw. Um, no rejoice to us pad players, I find it almost impossible. But when I play on a stick, I found I can reliably do it quite often. When it comes to this overhead, if you can get the red parry, that's huge, especially if you're in the corner and crouching. Ken can SA3 off of it if it's meaty enough and it sucks. I think it was Bayfell who had the YouTube video, I think, talking about the depth of Third Strike. I'm pretty sure it was that video where it's worth it to go for the second parry because if you're not crouching and just the second one hits, he can't connect off of it. Sure, there's mix-up potential for a dash or something, but you could do something like if you're playing Remy, he dashes, you do a tech throw into a jab and then confirm it and then get a flash kick. I don't know, that's getting a little more deep than I had planned for this uh, little chat or TED talk I'm giving. Anyway, that Bayfell video, if you've ever watched the Third Strike video on YouTube, you'll see it in your recommendation feed, I'm sure. I see it all the time and I've watched it a couple times. One of my favorite red parries to do is against Alex, his EX charge headbutt thing, whatever the fuck you would call it. Um, and this one is kind of goofy because I don't necessarily do it based off of the timing of the animations like I would the tic-tac-toe for Shotos. I do it based on sound. As soon as the uh, first hit sound ends, I throw out the parry and then it'll hit. Now I've noticed playing online this isn't very reliable unless the connection is very good. Um, it can be very frustrating because you'll be fit trying to fish out that fucking EX move and then when he finally does it you'll miss it and oh fuck you. My favorite one I'm about to start incorporating into my gameplay is the one against Yun. He has the target combo that's uh, jab, short, strong and he normally activates it into SA3 and then you're fucked and then you're just kind of sitting there with your dick in your hand until the round ends. This will really fuck things up and it's kind of a psychological thing because once you show hey motherfucker don't do this then that's when more mind games starts to come into play in the third strike. The parry timing would probably fuck up SA3 and then even if he does pop SA3 you might be able to get out of it somehow with a jumper. I don't know. Uh, fucking young players man. That shit is so difficult sometimes. 
If you're new to Third Strike and this is kind of uh, too much to handle, slowly dip your toes into it. You don't need this to play and have fun. And honestly, the best option for a lot of these, especially if you're a new player, is to just block. Don't go for the red parries. Don't fish for parries. Don't even parry until you understand why you're parrying. I'm sure a lot of uh, newcomers think parries is just a Jedi mind trick. I'm reading everything my opponent is doing. Um, but really, most parries are set up. For example, one of my uh, go-tos is Remy's command overhead into down into fucking SA2. Or Ken has one that's uh, his standing medium kick into down into SA3. That's more the goals of parries rather than just fucking Illidan wrap a blindfold around your eyes and fuck you. Parry, 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 parry. Unless you're just having fun, then fuck it. Do parries all the time. Go for every parry. But if you're trying to sit down in a competitive setting, just block and think why you want to parry and plan ahead for it. It's not just about, oh fuck, I got to parry, big damage. And it's not necessarily about reading your opponent's mind. Yeah, reads are nice and they do happen, but I don't know, parry is just a complicated ass thing that I'm not even uh, sure I have a it's not so much you're some kind of blindfolded master you know you're going to parry certain things and you have a plan for when you're going to parry and why you're going to parry it's not just oh I'm motherfucking Jedi mind trick parry 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 I mean it can be like that but in a tournament competitive setting you really don't want to go for that or if you're actively trying to increase your skill level and get better at the game. A lot of people always ask me, hey, how do I get better at parries? Or, hey, I need to get good at parrying. And you really don't. It's more of a, you need to get better at your mindset about the mechanic of parries. You gotta get uh, more familiar with the idea of parrying rather than doing it itself. It's more about showing your opponent, hey, I can do this and that limits your options so watch out and then you build layers off each other but like I said it's all about having fun um, have fun playing third strike it's the best fucking fighting game I love the shit um, and play Remy